Welcome to Research Business Daily Report, where serious market researchers come for news insights and commentary about their field. Information that impacts them both inside and outside their present place of business. Today on RBDR, a very special report for you as we wrap up our 2016 schedule. Three research experts join me here for discussion how, in the spirit of President-elect Donald Trump, we can make research great again. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by QOASIS, a self-service marketing research solution designed specifically for market research professionals. The only platform that is delivering industrial strength, easy to use, unrestricted survey building blocks, many of them absolutely at no cost to its users and powered by the 22-year industry expertise of Socratic Technologies. QOASIS benefits in your next do-it-yourself survey survey would be too lengthy to run down right here, but we're going to give you some of them at the end of today's report. Following the election of Donald J. Trump to the presidency of the United States, making America great again is the emphasis and everybody's got it on their lips. But in research, can the case be made that market research great again is an also worthwhile project? Oh, you didn't know we needed to make research great again? Oh, oh well, we'll forget about that idea just for a moment. I invited three experts to help us with some ideas of their own of exactly how we might be able to make research great again. They are Kristen Luck of Luck Collective, Dennis Gagne of the DCG Group, and Kevin Lani of KL Communications. Now, they came up with ideas that in terms of respondents, one, will not be refusable, two, will not be respondable to, and three, that respondents will not be able to escape from, as you will see shortly. Ladies first, Kristen, I understand you've got a heck of an idea, a shocking idea, for how to make research great again. So the dance floor is yours. Literally, it is a shocking idea. So there was a great, if not um, somewhat frightening, uh, focus group that Comedy Central ran during the elections with actual Trump supporters, where they proposed putting shock collars on illegal immigrants and tossing them back over the border um, with the idea that, you know, if they tried to come back into the U.S., they would be shocked, sort of like your dog when it crosses an electric dog fence. Okay, um, I, can, I can understand why you would want to do that to you know Mexicans who have come here illegally across the border, but how do you tie that into research? Well, okay, so so I had the idea from from this focus group because the Trump supporters actually thought this was a great idea. I know that's that's kind of scary. But then I started thinking about it and I thought, gosh, if that many people actually think it's a great idea. What if we translated that idea to research? So there's so much focus now on secondary and passive data collection. Why not just lure respondents into a relaxed setting, sort of like a conference room, a cocktail party? Uh, you give them some wine, some cookies, and then, bam, you microchip them. Microchip them. You microchip right. them. It's going to be like the 2017 version of Knowledge Network's 1999 web TV panel, sort of the first of its kind. Um, as an industry, we'd have a permanent source of passive data collection. I mean, there'd be no opting out. Um, and traditional data collection would finally be dead, which means it would free up about mm, probably 50% of all conference content, which means we'd have all that free time for why people really go to conferences, which is to drink. I, I think this is just a big league idea, or as Trump would say it, big league. Okay, so you're talking about thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even millions. more. Millions. Millions. I actually, I have to go, Bob, because I actually have a line of people waiting outside my house. <laughs> okay, well, listen, your, your Make Research Great Again cap is in the mail. Thank you, Bob. I look forward to wearing it at every conference next year. Okay. Dennis Gagne. Um, yes, sir. You, you've got some ideas about how to make research great again, and um, why don't you uh, lay that on us? Well, um, thank you, Bob, for the opportunity. It's not just an idea. It's well underway. You know, coming out of this election, everybody thinks they understand, you know, this and that. But the fact is, as social scientists, we know what drove this shocking results in the 
issues with the polls. And it's about time we got our handle on non-response bias and non-responders. So all, so all, all I, the non-responders... Oh, yeah, that, I'm excited. Oh, so all Go ahead, Bob. Non, all the non-responders who didn't tell the pollsters ahead of time who they were going to vote for or, or didn't tell them truthfully who they were going to vote for. Well, they were non-responders, so we don't know. But here's the thing. It's time for us to solve this problem. So we're announcing today the world's first non-responder panel. That's right. We're going to go after this issue of non-responders and make research great again. And, and how in the world are you going to do that? Well, we've actually already started, Bob. Our business plan involved six focus groups across the nation of non-responders. Ah, okay. So you were recruiting non-responders in six major markets across the country. And how's that going? Well, no one showed up, but we expected that. So we are now moving from the qualitative to the quantitative research. And uh, of course, we don't have any completes yet, but the, the data collection is pretty much on track. So, so far, so good, Bob. Hmm. And what should we expect in, uh, in coming weeks or months as far as that goes? Not a lot, because as a non-responder effort, most of the information we're gathering is, um, well, immeasurable. Ah, okay. Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a very good way to look at it. So it sounds promising? We don't know, Bob, because the whole challenge we have with our non-responder initiative is the flow of information is just so uh, unique. Um, but we're going to keep at it because this is the reason this will help us make research great again. Thanks, Bob. Well, your cap is in the mail as well. <laughs> Thank you. And finally, Kevin, um, it's a heavy load, yeah. but but you've yep. got to follow up. And, and I understand oh, you've, got, you've got quite an idea. Well, I do. I do. It's, you know, I, actually, I think I've been inspired already by Kristen and Dennis. I've been giving quite a bit of thought to your challenge. I mean, how do we make research great again? And I really appreciate so, the effort you've put in. I I have. I have. I spent a good seven minutes on this. So, uh, you know, thank you. I'll send you a bill for it later. Okay. Um, if the election taught us anything, Bob, it's the public can't be trusted. So I think we're wasting our time trying to talk to them anymore. So I think if they're not going to tell us the truth, it's time we bring in some muscle. Bring in some muscle. Well, I mean, yes, we've already talked about electroshock therapy. What, <laughs> yes. You're talking about something else to motivate them. More old school, Bob. Uh, you know, if you can't trust them, being a Jersey guy, I mean, we've got ways of making offers to folks that they can't refuse. So I have some field agents uh, that we can employ. At least that's what we like to refer to them as. Uh, do you remember I, the guy? I, think I, met, I met some of them last year, I think. I do. Yes, yes, yes. Mario and Guido. You remember those two? Uh, yeah, famously. Yes. And that was a wonderful edition of RBDR. I believe it was one of your highest rated. And you picked up all sorts of new Twitter followers. Hashtag Bapo show. Yeah. <laughs> so let's okay. get back. So let's get back. How, how do your associates... Yes. Around the country, uh, like the two yep. guys that I've met here in Chicago, how do they fit into making research great again? They do the same thing we did to you, Bob. Tie, me, tie people up and put tape over their mouth? Exactly. And to Kristen's point, I mean, we can use passive listening devices. We hook them up to neural marketing headsets. And then while they're bound and gag, we show them product concept boards. And then uh, we, we pick up exactly how they're reacting. And so, we know they're telling the truth because so, they can't talk. Yeah. So, so you're actually uh, coming up with two solutions. You're not yes. only getting the the the, uh, the real thoughts of these people, probably interspersed oh, yeah. with some other things in their brain that they might be battling with at the moment, like yep. how, the he how the heck do I get out of this? But you're also proving the value of neuroscience. You know, it's a win-win, don't you think? I mean, really, I should get some kickback from those guys. Uh, so far, the beta testing has been a little uh, incomplete, you know, hashtag disappointing. Uh, we are finding very clear signals uh, from these individuals. Unfortunately, they're not doing a good job of focusing on the product concepts. They're just basically all we get out of them is help. 
disappointing. Well, clearly, um, these associates of yours will have no trouble getting in and visiting people around the country oh, yeah. to, they're, they're to, very, to get them involved in, in market research. Um, you know, one of the things that occurs to me, what if MRA had a certification program for those people? You know what? Could you imagine that? I mean, the level of that, you know, the the to be a certified, let's call it field agent. Uh, you know, I, I think it would take a unique individual to really qualify for that. I would I think we'd have a lot of fun going through the uh, admission process. By the way, uh, the jacket, is that? Yes. That, that's a big part of this whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a little Fonzie-esque here, too, but, you know, it's a little bit the other aspect of it. This is uh, the fedora, too. Uh, this is part of the look we do when we first uh, let people make the mistake of letting us in the house. And then we uh, take the field agents, and we pretty much uh, are ready to get solid research. You know, I was going to tell you that I think you deserved a golden make research grade again, Cap, but I think I'm going to make it black. Okay. The only problem we seem to be having, Bob, is that uh, there's some certain questions of legality of all this. Uh, there's a number of lawsuits. Oh, uh, come on. Come on. That's what I'm saying, Dennis, I, I mean, but, you know. I, hey, you're in New Jersey. I'm in Chicago. And so, yes. is, and so is Dennis. I don't think there's any legality issues. Dennis, do you think so? No issues with this at all. None at all. You know, I could see this expanding, you know, to different areas of the country, maybe the the, the South, you know, we could uh, look to have uh, Machine Gun Murphy uh, the, in the West. We can have Pretty Boy McElroy, uh, U2, Lead Belly Letterer, et cetera, you know. Oh, I love it. <laughs> then it's, you're gone, gone, you're, so, you know, it's gone, yay. So it's, a, it's a, you know what, we can, we can franchise this. Ah, we're, he's on to something, Bob. He's on to something. Well, I, Big I, idea. Personally, I personally am going to present these three ideas from Kristen, mm. from Dennis, and from Kevin to the to the top to the boards of all the yep. major research conferences. And oh see, yeah, and see what kind of buy-in we get. It's an offer they can't refuse, Bob. Let them know <laughs> if they're not on board. We'll see them sooner than later. That's right. I think you got a point there. Okay. Well, uh, I think we've made research great again in three potential new ways. And now let's see how much of the industry salutes. <laughs> I'm sure Bob, they'll they have a for us. They can't refuse his idea. They can't respond to my idea. And they can't escape Kristen's idea. <laughs> And, Brilliant. and on that note, um, we'll uh, wrap this session up. Uh, gentlemen and Kristen, who's already uh, disembarked, mm -hmm. thank you very much yep. for your input. That's your Research Business Daily Report, sponsored by QOASIS, a self-service marketing research solution designed specifically for market research professionals. The single platform that delivers industrial strength, easy to use, unrestricted survey building blocks, and at no cost to the user. And it's powered by the 22-year industry expertise of Socratic Technologies. QOASIS's giant advance in do-it-yourself work is only getting better as Socratic Technologies introduces updates, the latest of which came about in early November. QOASIS has no limit on the number of questions you can ask or the number of respondents you can reach out to. And QOASIS will link you to hundreds of online panel providers so you can pick the one or more that can help you target your audience most precisely. QOASIS can help you gamify your survey versus its internal components. And QOASIS can provide consulting and analytic services through Socratic Technologies. In fact, Socratic Technologies says of QOASIS that it is where marketing research budgets get a vacation. And the service which was introduced this year is so new and positively different and better than other DIY services that, well, they're still trying to improve it. Developers for QOASIS are looking for users' input. So why don't you become one of those people who provides the input? Visit the QOASIS homepage at q-oasis.com. As I mentioned, this is our final RBDR for 2016, and we'd like to thank our sponsors, all our contributors to the videos this year, and most of all, to you, our viewers, for sticking with us. We wish all of you a happy Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. 
And we'll be here to welcome you back on Tuesday, January the 3rd, 2017. Oh, and one last thing. If you'd like to obtain a Make Research Great Again cap, such as the one you saw today, let us know. Take care. Bye.